but the, the, the science behind this, there's some science. There's a guy, a uh, physicist named Dr. James Kakaklios, and he has done a book called The Physics of Superheroes. Now, I'd link to it below, but apparently if I do that too much, I may get community guidelines strikes, so I don't want to do that. What I have linked to, however, is one of his lectures that he gave on this subject, which is part of the Distinctive Voices lecture series, and you have it's a link to it down below at the very bottom of my um, uh, uh, my uh, uh, description. Go watch that; it's utterly fascinating. Now, I take my cues with Superman, even with Superman, from Dr. Kakaklios, and I was lucky enough to see him do one of his lectures very similar to this one in person at a Star Trek convention. And I approached him afterwards because uh, Larry Larry saying the opening was perfect. Oh, God, am I going to talk about that opening in terms of great moments? Yes, a perfect opening, absolutely. There is so much in this film that's perfect. Captain Jazz asks, why do modern movie theaters barely hold 75 to 100 people per screen? Um, so they can have lots and lots of these uh, you know, theaters inside of a cineplex, get as many people in for any particular movie, and it's uh, to some extent to cover what happens if a movie sucks. You know, if they've got two screens running a movie that sucks, and they have six other screens that are running movies that are any good, uh, that means that they can take the loss a little better. I think that's basically the reason for it. It just went out of style. It just went out of style, unfortunately. But what Dr. Kakaklios does is he approaches any given superhero, and he says, okay, we will give this superhero a one-time miracle exemption from the laws of nature. We don't say, oh, it's not possible for people to run super fast. We say, okay, if it's possible for someone like the Flash or Quicksilver to run at super speeds and see things at a slow-down rate, does the things that they do make sense in terms of physics. And so he gives a talk about this and gives some examples of where it does work and where it doesn't. But that's what we ask ourselves. What is the one time miracle exemption that we can give to these people that is miracle exemption from the laws of nature? So I talked to Dr. Kakaklios. I said, what do you do with Superman? You know, he's got so many powers. How do you have a one-time miracle exemption for Superman? And he pointed me off to some physicists who actually, not him, but have considered this whole problem and even wrote a paper on it. I couldn't find it, so I can't find, put, get a link to it, but I read the paper. And their conclusion is very simple. Superman does, in fact, only have one superpower. His superpower is that he can control inertia. And all of his powers can be explained with that one miracle exemption from laws of nature. So, for example, super, super strength. Well, if you can control inertia, it doesn't fracking matter anymore. <laughs> if you can control inertia, it just doesn't matter. And getting into other powers, if you have, um, if you, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting back to my notes. Um, if you have supervision, right, that's, that works too. Heat vision, well, you're talking about controlling the inertia and, uh, you know, atoms in between your eye and the target and the inertia in the target so that they are bumping into each other and creating heat. X-ray vision also works. It's not really X-rays. If you think about it, what he's probably actually doing is using his, in using his powers to, on a target, move the atoms just slightly apart enough with inertia so that he can see through them. Not enough to hurt anybody or hurt any object that he's looking through, but just enough to be able to see through them. He can probably also do this with lead. He has a notorious weakness of not being able to see through lead, but because that's lead is really dense. But if you sat there and you're trying really hard to move the atoms apart, what happens with lead because it's so dense is it probably loses its cohesion. It starts to fall apart or maybe has explosive results in terms of how it does that. Superman probably can do things with lead, but it won't work out the way his X-ray vision would work out. His flight, well, if he can control inertia, his flight is not a problem. His speed is not a problem. No speed is a problem, including faster than light travel. And therefore, by the way, a reversal of time. What we're seeing at the end of the movie, everybody thinks he's turning back the world. He's not. What Superman is doing is flying at faster than the speed of light, which for him is a reversal of time. 
And when he's done, he flies back again so that he can get beneath the speed of light and then go down and take care of things. Now, the filmmakers didn't have that in mind. But if you think about Superman as an ability, his one-time miracle exemption from the laws of nature is that he can control inertia. It makes perfect sense. And it also explains things like when he can stand in one place and say, be hit by the Batmobile. Well, ordinarily, people would, there's, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, so he should be flying off in the other direction. But if you can control inertia, it doesn't matter. The Batmobile can bounce off, and you will stay in one place. Um, this is also invulnerability. If you can control inertia, any weapon that's used against you doesn't matter. There's no inertia. You shoot bullets at some guy, no inertia when it hits them. Just nothing. So no velocity. That's how you get the invulnerability. He probably also has quite a lot of other powers that has never even occurred to him to try because they're so fantastic. I mean, you know, if you can control inertia, that opens up an enormous, enormous, almost limitless door. Now, there is another couple of pieces I'm, uh, of science I'm going to talk about. One of them is Superman catching Lois Lane uh, from that fall in the building. There has been a massive, massive uh, ongoing conversation in fandom about how Lois Lane stays alive. In real physics, if Superman just ran up there and caught her, well, she's coming down from that building at a fairly high velocity by the time he hits her, she would get killed on the impact of hitting his arms. But... If he can control inertia, it doesn't matter. And the same thing, too, if he's like doing super strength feats with large objects. If he picks up like a boat, like apparently he did in this film, and dropped it off in front of the jail. Ordinarily, almost any place that you would pick up a boat, it, you know, if you picked it up from the front, you'd probably tear the front off. If you put, t picked it up from the middle, well, you have all of this mass that's going to be crashing around you and it's going to start falling apart but if superman can control inertia doesn't matter he can pick up anything he wants anywhere he wants and it will not matter larry larry says initially he could only leap tall buildings yes what happened was in uh the max fleischer cartoons and i will talk about this uh, in terms of some of what goes on towards the end of the review oh my god i'm at 45 minutes oh my god this is going to run so long I have never gotten through an entire um, uh, run-through on this. This could be four hours. It really could. Um, but yes, he used to only leak tall buildings. What, happens when the Max, what happened was in the Max Fleischer cartoons, they found that it didn't look very good. And there is one cartoon where Superman's just leaping. And they said to DC, hey, can we just make him fly? It'll look a lot better. And DC said, yeah, go ahead. And then DC picked up flying out of the Max, uh, Max Fleischer cartoons. Happens a lot. And it happened with this movie, too, where the comics pick something up from the movies. So, But even disregarding that, in terms of Superman uh, having the ability to control inertia, if you watch closely, Superman doesn't just stop and catch Lois Lane. Watch the building in the background, because it's showing her falling as Superman catches her. Then the background slows down and starts going back up. Clearly, what Superman has done is the correct thing, physically. He has matched her velocity and then slowed her down and brought her back up. And he does the same thing with the helicopter. Matches. You can see it as the moon buildings moving by. He matches velocity with the helicopter, takes it in his hand, and then starts back up. So that, my friends, clears up that entire scientific um, debate that has gone on in fandom since this movie was released. Now, there is one bit of science that cannot happen, and that is California falling to the ocean after the big one. That's not possible because what's actually happening there is the two um, tectonic plates are both moving north but at different speeds, and they are locked up at several points like the San Andreas area. They're locked up like this, and every once in a while, as one of them starts to move north at a different speed, you get, you know, pull on where it's locked up and you get earthquakes someday i don't know when could be tomorrow could be a hundred years ago from now could be a thousand but someday the pressure on this is going to be so bad that it pulls that's the big one 
And when that happens, it will kill millions of people. All of those supposedly earthquake-proof buildings are not going to be earthquake-proof. The West Coast is going to be a death zone. It is going to happen. It will happen someday. Maybe not any time in my lifetime, but it will because tectonic plates will not stand that pressure forever, and they will go snap at some point, and that will be a disaster of biblical proportions. Yes, what no Luther land. Yes, none of the stuff that Lex wants to do. That could never happen. But aside from that, we just leave the science alone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.